R or so, uh, NIT, that's the stock we're talking about after the company bagged a multi-year contract from Citi to provide uh, managed trading services. NIT will provide these uh, services to Citi in Europe, West Asia, as well as in Africa. We, ha we have with us uh, Mr. Raul Patwardhan, uh, the CEO of NIT, who joins us on the phone line currently. Uh, hi, uh, Raul, thanks so much uh, for joining in. Uh, could you give us some details in terms of uh, revenue, when exactly this will hit your profit and loss account, and uh, how do you see it uh, move for the next couple of years? FI16, will there any revenue come in? FI17, you could give us some uh, numbers. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. A uh, couple of qualifiers. We are in the quiet period, uh, just a few days before our quarter two results. So mm -hmm. I am not going to give any indication of numbers for this quarter, mm -hmm. uh, nor am I giving any forward uh, numbers as such. Uh, the second thing I want to highlight is that uh, we do have uh, to respect client confidentiality. So uh, the, the information that we made available in the press release kind of is what we can make available publicly. Having said that, we're very pleased uh, to have been able to convert this opportunity, which we have been working on for some time. And uh, with this, we will now be able to solidify our uh, outlook that we had provided in our May uh, investor meet, uh, that we will hit 15% growth for the corporate business for the year and 12% debitor. Uh, this, this deal basically improves the confidence and guarantee that we will get to those numbers or better and also improves our ability to continue to deliver those numbers over the next few years. Uh, managed training services contracts are multi-year. Uh, mm -hmm. Citibank is obviously a very large a global customer. We're starting with a relationship with their EMEA operations. Uh, and even within that, we're starting with a smaller part of that operation. But an MTS contract, essentially the whole objective is to grow the relationship uh, to to the entire EMEA region, and thereafter, if we do a good job, obviously there is potential for us to service Citibank globally. Uh, what is strategic sourcing? Uh, essentially, uh, large multinationals uh, access training services of all kinds and all subjects and topics to service their different employees all over the world and their different subsidiaries. Uh, and because training is a highly decentralized activity, they tend to have a very large number of uh, small and mid-sized training partners. Mm. So their focus is to find a way to manage them more efficiently and appoint a strategic sourcing partner who manages all these providers on their behalf, help them achieve efficiencies and also help them achieve savings through transformation of the learning uh, portfolio. So that essentially is the task. And this is something we've been doing for Shell, we've been doing for uh, a couple of other companies uh, in Europe and in the US, uh, and uh, we're very pleased with this contract. Okay. Will you be able to extend such a similar contract with other players? Anything, anyone you're in talks with, can we expect that soon? Yeah, we have a good pipeline. Uh, uh, at the end of uh, quarter one, uh, we had closed uh, many of the deals in our pipeline. So we've been working very hard over the last uh, uh, quarter to build up our pipeline. So today we're quite happy with the profile of pipeline that we have and it gives us confidence that our uh, ongoing 15% top line growth and ongoing 12% EBITDA is more in hand than it might have been three months ago. Uh, so overall, I think we're moving in the right direction. Uh, everything that we had laid out uh, is going as per plan. Mm. And our future directions also, we feel even more confident about them than we have been so far. But Mr. Patwadhan, this 15% revenue growth target, 12% EBITDA, is only for your corporate learning group, right? Yes, I'm talking okay. about corporate learning. Okay. because what about, skill, about what about the skills and career group? Uh, What's the visibility there? Yeah, what we had said in May, uh, and I can only repeat that uh, since we do have a quarter two results coming up a uh, few days from now, uh, that we will be back to growth and back to profit in this business. At the end of quarter one, uh, we had almost got to that level. We were break even uh, more or less and uh, growth was flat vis-a-vis -vis last year. Uh, we expect to be making more progress both on the growth direction and on the profit direction over this quarter and the next two quarters. All right, uh, Raul, could you give us a final few details then? What's the opportunity size really in this CLG uh, business? And also, could you tell us how many clients have you added in the last uh, few years? Because I want to understand, you know, there's so much of talk about CLG as a business. Uh, what's the outlook like? 
Yeah, I think if I were to take a typical large Fortune 1000 multinational, and I'm not naming Citibank, but any any such company in that size, uh, they would typically spend maybe 500 million or even a billion dollars on training okay, mm. uh, globally. Uh, so the kind of contracts we have are a very, very small footprint in a very large spend that right. they have across the entire uh, organization worldwide. Mm -hmm. so if you were to compare the way the IT outsourcing grew from initially doing, uh, sending in uh, professionals to work uh, as time and materials resources inside the IT organization of a large multinational, and thereafter how the business has grown in terms of the share of the business being delivered through outsourcing, we will see that trend starting to accelerate in the training outsourcing space too. Okay. And the IT spend uh, is roughly maybe about two to three times the training spend of a company. So it's not, the training is not all that much smaller than the amount of uh, budgets that are spent on uh, IT. So we, we see a lot of upside, uh, the total potential uh, for consolidating revenues out of our large customers, uh, even without new customers, is quite large. Uh, and given that there are many industries where cost focus is extremely high, I would say corporate training or in-house training is the last bastion for cost savings in the support function because almost everything else has moved already into outsourcing and offshoring. Uh, training is probably the last bastion where much of it is still happening in-house and in-sourced. All right, uh, Mr. Patwadhan, we leave it at that. Thanks so much uh, for joining in. By the way, those are DB Corp's numbers which are flashing on your screen and it's a miss compared to what the